Hey folks, very excited for today's review. What I have in front of me is the Audient Evo 4. It's a brand new USB audio interface just announced in January, just came on the market late February, early March. Uh, we're going to crack it open and see what she's like. So here's everything you're going to get in the box. It's just the audio interface, a little two-page getting started user manual thing, and then a USB A to C cable. That's all, man. Apart from some packing materials, this is what you're going to get. So taking a look at the device, starting around back, uh, you have your two combination jacks. Those will take either XLR or TRS inputs. Uh, next to those you have the monitor outputs and then the USB-C input. Going around to the front, on the one side you have the low impedance instrument input and a headphone output on the other. And then looking at the face of the device, in the middle you have the giant settings dial surrounded by a ring of LEDs and then columns of buttons on either side of the device. Control on this little guy is, is very much a poke and twist kind of situation. Uh, there's only one dial on the entire device, so you have to tell it what you want the dial to do before you start twisting on it. Uh, if you wanted to change the gain for channel 1, you'd press 1, then flip the dial. If you wanted to change 2, you'd press 2, flip the dial. Uh, if you press 48V and then either 1 or 2, that'll turn phantom power on or off for those channels. Uh, the big green button is the smart gain button, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, on the other side, you have the raw versus processed mix. Uh, if you flip the dial in the one direction, you'll hear the raw output directly from your mics and instruments. If you flip it in the other direction, you'll hear the processed audio from your PC, including all of your effects and, and all of your, your multiple tracks, that kind of thing. And the idea is that that raw audio is completely latency-free. You will hear exactly what you're playing when you're playing it, whereas the processed audio coming from the PC could have a significant amount of latency. And then below those, you have the volume control button. So obviously, the Evo 4 is not designed like most other audio interfaces. Uh, a lot of interfaces are just a cluster of you know, knobs and buttons and jacks, and, and uh, that can be a good thing. It, you know, if you learn your interface and you get comfortable with it, you know exactly which knob does what thing, so it's a one-step process. I need to change the gain for channel 1. I reach up, I turn the right knob, done. Whereas with the Evo, you may have to you know, select a button before you turn the knob. Everything kind of becomes a bit of a two-step process. Now, on the good side, all of these controls are digital. So in your software, you may get gain controls that will affect the device itself. You're not just changing the output, but you are actually altering the gain on the Evo 4 from the software. That's something not a lot of inter other interfaces can do. So if you take a look at the spec sheet for the Evo 4, it's pretty much going to look like the spec sheet for every other device in this class. There's just not a lot of differentiation in this price range. Uh, now the Evo 4 will do 24 kilobit, 96 kilohertz audio. Uh, that's pretty much par for the course. There are some interfaces that will do 192 kilohertz audio. Uh, however, most of us are going to record in 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. I'd say 99% of us wouldn't be able to tell the difference between 48 kilohertz and 96 kilohertz, and 99.9% .9 of us wouldn't be able to tell the difference between 96 kilohertz and 192. So, it, basically, what I'm saying is. is if you're looking at a $130 interface, 96 kHz audio is going to be good enough for you. So we can compare the spec sheet of the Evo 4 to the Focusrite 2i2. Uh, the 2i2 is an incredibly popular interface nowadays. If you're asking for suggestions on budget USB audio interfaces, the Focusrite 2i2 is going to be near or at the top of everybody's list. The spec sheets for these devices indicate that the Evo has slightly quieter and more sensitive preamps, but the Focusrite can drive lower impedance headphones, and, and don't forget that it supports 192 kHz audio. Honestly though, these are just numbers on a page. So now, I, I don't have the knowledge or the gear or the software or the inclination uh, to vet the technical specs of the, this device. I, I can tell you it sounds good to me. However, uh, B. Andrew over at the Podcastage channel he did review this guy with some pretty great results, so if you're interested in the Evo 4, after you're done listening to me babble incoherently, check out his review right up here. What about software? Uh, if you're looking at budget interfaces, and especially if this is your first budget interface, you probably don't have a lot of DAWs and you know, plugins and stuff like that to utilize. Uh, so what do you get with the Evo 4? Uh, so Cubase is kind of a, one of the industry standard DAWs. You're, you're probably good to go there, especially if you're just getting started. 
so no, no major complaints with the software. However, if you do shop around some of the other packages, you can get some pretty impressive stuff. Uh, for instance, I know like Native was giving away their, their full edition guitar rig for a while with, with their, even their low-end interfaces, even like their $100 interface. Uh, you'd get you know, $200 worth of guitar rig with it. Uh, so you know, nothing really stands out on the software, but you're going to get what you need. So, so if pretty much all things are equal spec-wise, why would you choose the Evo 4 over the million other devices in this class? You know, why not a Focusrite or a PreSonus? Or, or if you care about design and you like the way that the, this thing looks, uh, M Audio and Native have very good-looking desktop devices as well. Well, there are a couple killer features on this Evo that are unique in this class. Uh, the first is the smart gain control. Smart Gain lets the Evo sample either input channel as you play your instrument or sing into your microphone, and it will then automatically set an appropriate gain to ensure you won't clip. So to test out Smart Gain, uh, I hooked up an XLR microphone to the second input. Uh, I'm going to press the Smart Gain button, press channel 2, and then press Smart Gain again, and you'll see that the microphone turns red, the lights begin to flash. Now I'm going to go over and just do spoken word into the microphone. I am talking into the microphone as the device is listening. This is going to be spoken word gain, so I expect it to be turned up pretty high. Uh, I'm not singing, I'm not screaming, I'm simply just speaking into the microphone from a very short distance. So this is something I would do for a podcast. And as you can see, uh, it set the gain to about uh, a little over half. Uh, almost uh, Closer to two-thirds on that one. So now we're going to try it again at kind of a whisper. I'm going to hit Smart Gain to Smart Gain. It's now listening. Whispering into the microphone. This is something that would be more appropriate for ASMR or for a children's lullaby or something very soft. Which maybe the intro or outro of an unusual indie song or something along those lines. Uh, but it is very soft, very quiet. I expect the gain to be pretty high since I'm speaking so soft. And as you can see, at a whisper, that gain is set way up, 75% um, of, of, of max. So now I've plugged my acoustic electric into the instrument input. I'm going to switch over. It is input one. Now when you plug in your instrument, it overrides the first XLR slot. Uh, so it's an either or situation. You can't have two microphones plugged into the back and then an instrument in the front. Uh, all you're going to get is the second microphone and the instrument. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finger pick some stuff pretty lightly uh, on this first go round. So smart gain. One. Smart gain. As you can see, the gain is about a little over half. Oops, wrong one. A little over half uh, with that that light finger picking. Um, now I'm going to do the, the the gain, and I'm going to play something pretty aggressively with a pick, uh, and we'll see what it comes out with then. So smart gain, one smart gain. And as you can see, it set the gain very low, uh, what may be a quarter of the way up. And now if I was going to finger pick with this gain, barely registering on the meter, uh, conversely, if I was going to play something aggressively with the previous high gain, I'd be clipping all the time. Uh, so the Evo 4 is picking the right gain, setting it for me, couldn't be easier. That's great if you're going to be switching instruments, if you're going to be switching microphone distances, uh, if you're going to be switching microphones in general. Uh, not even, you don't even have to look at the DAW, you don't have to look at meters, all you do is hit the button, pick a channel, hit the button again, and let it do its thing. Pretty cool feature indeed. So in my limited experience so far, Smart Gain has worked remarkably well. Whether it's a couple of different microphones, or my acoustic guitar, or my electric guitar, uh, just a little bit of playing into the device, and it's picked an appropriate gain level pretty much every time. Uh, now, setting gain is not rocket surgery. You know, you can look at your meters, you can tweak the gain up and down, play into your instrument, repeat, and then, you know, a few seconds later, you have an appropriate gain set. It, it's not that complex. Uh, but not having to worry about it at all, not having to look at a meter, uh, not having to twist the dial, just hit a couple of buttons, play what you're going to play anyway, and it just works, that's pretty cool. 
And that's not the only unique feature this little guy has in its arsenal. It also supports loopback. Uh, so you can basically pipe audio from any application running on your computer into the device and then run it back out into your DAW and record Skype conversations or Discord or you can even sample audio from YouTube or Spotify. Uh, it's not something I'll use often and it's not a feature that's you know completely unheard of in audio interfaces, uh, but it is pretty rare at this price point and it's kind of cool to have as well. So. Brass tacks. Uh, why did I buy this guy? What am I going to be plugging into it? Uh, what problems is it solving for me? Uh, well, I am very much a budget YouTuber. I'm recording this video right now on a $25 Techstar mic that's about 24 inches off my face right over there. Uh, Now, that little guy is plugged directly into the mic input on my camera. Uh, the camera audio preamps are very noisy and very soft. I spend quite a bit of time removing the noise and amplifying these audio files so that they're suitable for these videos. Uh, that will now be plugged directly into this guy. So I, I, I play a little guitar. Uh, I have an acoustic electric as well as an electric guitar that I like to noodle about on. Um, I've been plugging them into my PC using this cheap little $13 you know, USB to quarter inch uh, cable. Actually it doesn't sound bad. It's, it, it's per perfectly serviceable from, from an audio quality perspective. However, I do get like 40 to 50 milliseconds of latency uh, out of this cable. Guitars will now be plugged directly into this guy where I'm expecting closer to like 10 milliseconds. This little guy here uh, is a GLS ES58S. Basically, it's like a $40 Shure SM58 knockoff that I've had for probably 15 years. Slow down, lie down, remember it's just you and me. Don't say loud, oh, wow, wow, remember how this used to be. I just want you to know something that all right maybe let's get closer tonight so would i recommend the audience evil for well it sounds great um, sound quality wise it'll, it'll go toe to toe with anything else in its class I've had no issues with the drivers or the software or latency or, or anything like that. Uh, and I really like the design. I, I think it's a great looking device. Um, and I think the controls are intuitive if they, even if they are that you know, push a button, turn a knob type of situation. Now, if you're looking for something that has more traditional controls, there are other interfaces out there. Uh, and if you're looking for something that's got a bit better build quality, you know, that you can throw in a bag and not worry about it and can take a bit of a knock, uh, again, the Evo 4 might not be the best interface for you. So Smart Gain really is this device's killer feature. No other interface in the class has anything like it. And if you're somebody like me who changes activities frequently, you know, today I'm recording a YouTube video, tomorrow I might be singing and strumming on an acoustic guitar, the day after that I might be noodling away on my electric. Uh, it's something that I'm going to use very frequently. Uh, it works well, uh, it's very reliable, uh, it's super easy to use, and it's gonna be a big time saver. And for that reason, this interface is head and shoulders over anything else in its class for me. So I hope you found this review useful. Uh, if you got anything to say, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a like, and uh, I will see you next time.